Um, I was going to ask you, Kirk, whenever you approach a scene like that, what I love about your editing is actually you've got so much speed and pace and so much going on about what is unsaid as you're juggling all these elements. How do you, when you start watching your dailies, I heard an interview from you and you actually said sometimes, uh, David, as he continues shooting through the day, his close-ups sort of reveal what his intentions were. So sometimes you watch the close-ups first and then go back, or maybe you'd watch a wide shot and then go to the close-ups. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like how you would set about constructing that scene? I, I guess there's so many hundreds of choices that can be made for all of us putting scenes together that I look for um, absolutes. And I'll, I mean, it's not a rule that I kind of go in, in the order of like checking out a wide and then all the way to the close-ups, but I do like to know I do like to know what all the coverage is before we, before I sort of start selecting any kind of piece. Um, and I, I, even on, on uh, the, the entrance of, um, is it Rita? Yes. The Lily Collins character. Lily, yes, even in her entrance, like David's covered her entrance. I think he, I've got about four or five different angles for her. And I need to, and, and to cut back to her each time, I want that there to be an evolution of those angles. So it's like, we get to sort of set the palette on the opening and be wide. And then when you return to her, I'm a little bit tighter and then a little bit tighter. And then the tightest for her judgment mm -hmm. on, all right, I'll just let all this explode in front of you then at your request. And it's the, the, the same sort of thing when um, Hausman disappears to take his phone call, then that's an opportunity now for me to punch back out into a wide, to reset the palette, and then slowly work my way in, letting Lily be the kind of conduit between the two things happening, um, of this is happening over here, and now I'm gonna to swing to over there. So it's this dance of all these things occurring at once. Um, but absolutes start coming in those close-ups of, I've got that side angle from Lily from this perspective coming from the action over at the box and you'll get her entire scene from that angle, but there's no point cutting to her having a dialogue or a quick. So that's reserved just for this moment. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I know that and I want to save that for the big <gasps> when she sees what it is. So that's an absolute, like that's definitely going to happen there. And then you know, and, and same thing with Manx, big close up, and same for the big close up of the reveal of the. So it's all these things that, like, if I know that that's for sure, then I'm going to use the wider angles here. And so you just start looking for um, yeah. decisions that are made for you. But when all these dailies first arrive, they can be kind of overwhelming until you learn those patterns of this angle is useless until this moment. Yeah. And then keep it for that moment. Yes, and don't overuse it and don't overuse the close-ups. Find out how which close-up is going to deliver its knockout punch at that right thing and just use it for that. Um, that's the sort of disciplines that I try to do and, and I try very hard to, to be constantly evolving the camera angles mm -hmm. so that there's growth and then resetting and growth and resetting. And, and David... Um, feeds that to me by the way he moves people around in scenes a lot. Mm -hmm. So you sort of come in, sit down, it'll allow you to get to the point of the scene as you get tighter, and then you'll get an actor doing this, and then you can, boom, you can come out wider. And so there's a whole, you know, it's it's a ballet that's sort of set up for me to be able to really um, milk that. 